Hello everybody, I'm Rocky Alessandro from University of Ferrara and I'm here to present this uh, work titled uh, Machine Learning Approach to the Seismic Fragility Assessment of Buildings, made in collaboration with uh, the Department of Engineering Ferrara and the Interreg Italy Croatia PMO Gate. In this uh, presentation, I'm not going to talk about the algorithms, about uh, how they work or uh, the machine learning, but just uh, I'm going to show you some, the, uh, some of the results we obtained and uh, the methodology we use. And let's start. Well, evaluating the damage of buildings is a difficult and time consuming task. So in the context of performance-based earthquake engineering, the PBEE, an intensity measure uh, provides a link between the probability seismic hazard analysis and the probability structure response analysis. So the, for this reason, the purpose of this work is to develop a structural damage classifier and improve current prediction using scalar, scalar parameters called uh, intensity measures using uh, uh, machine learning supervised algorithms. The classifier will be able to predict the post earthquake damage state, state given the building features and using as well uh, ground motion features. So, uh, the purpose, as I said, is um, to accelerate the post earthquake damage evaluation for the critical buildings. Um, also, the goal for this preliminary work will uh, uh, answer the question which intensity measure is, is the most suitable for a risk analysis based on the machine learning algorithms. First of all, we set the data set to use for the algorithm. We uh, focus on three different building topologies that can be used to represent the majority of the building in the city of Ferrara. Below, you can see a schematic representation of the topologies. We have the uh, houses, the low rise buildings, and the medium, medium rise buildings. Um, which links to uh, an SDOF system, a single degree of freedom system, which is characterized by, by uh, its corresponding period of vibration, lateral strength, damping ratio, and etc. Uh, we set the um, damping ratio to 5% as usual. And uh, for the SDOF systems, we uh, set a force displacement behavior for the models, uh, which was based on common structural engineering parameters. And the uh, behavior is a bilinear behavior with a positive stiffness ratio of 2%. Also, uh, inside the data, uh, as I said, we uh, insert intensity measures. We carry out these uh, measures uh, using a set of uh, almost 300 acceleration time uh, response spectra taken from the PER database. Here you have the features um, of the data set. As you can see, they can be divided into building features and ground motion features. For the building ones, we have uh, the mass, the stiffening, the height, the period, etc. For the ground motion ones, we have the PGA, the SA uh, in uh, T1, the SA average, and the FIV3 methods. In this slide, uh, you can see the step we use uh, for this uh, approach. Um, using the app Matrix Classification Learner, we create an analytical model to classify the various samples into two categories, respectively representatives of a state of collapse or non-collapse for the structure. We assign before the categories um, running a non-linear analysis in MATLAB. The, as I said, the aim, the aim of the analysis is to assign for each observation, which uh, it is referred to as a um, stop oscillator, oscillator, which is refers to a type of building, one of the two output labels. So a state of collapse or non-collapse. This phase, these are just uh, labeled. Yes, the observation, as I said, are evaluated in terms of features, the building and the ground motion ones, thanks to which we have been able to assign a pieces output label. Finally, we estimate the label assignment accuracy of the model created by the algorithm. The tool we use to um, assess the accuracy of the model is a simple confusion matrix. As I said, the output is a binary output. So just a state of collapse or non collapse for the structure based on the maximum displace, displacement of the structure. We evaluate the precision of the model, analyzing uh, the confusion matrix and calculating three different super common parameters for each of the two classes. Below, you can see a blueprint of the confusion matrix 
and the parameters how they have been uh, calculated. We have the recall, the precision, the F1 score. They are pretty common in this kind of analysis. Here are some of the results. I'm not gonna talk about all the results we carried out, just a couple of them. For example, we have the intensity measure PGA. For it, we have been uh, using uh, several algorithms, supervised algorithms, which are the support vector machine, SQM, the logistic regression, and the fine trim. Here you can see for all of them, we have been um, set down for the short period, so the houses, the medium one, the 0 0.5 second period, and the uh, higher period, the 1.0 second. Here you can see um, the confusion matrices we obtain for uh, basically a lot of cases. But for example, if you focus your attention on the period 1.0, you can see how the algorithm uh, was not able to classify all of the um, observations of the data set. Why this? Because of the nature of the data set, it was uh, um, a little bit unbalanced. So uh, to be more clear, we have a lot of um, uh, cases, a lot of output coming from just one of the two classes. So basically we have a, a lot of oscillators that were on a collapsed state. So the algorithm didn't train pretty much well on uh, classification, uh, all of the output, in particular the collapsed state. Uh, you can see the same for the short one. For example, you can see we have a lot of uh, samples of the, one cl the first class and uh, very few for the second one. And um, you can see this for uh, all of the algorithms and uh, all, the, all of the intensity measure. For example, here we have the SA in P1, same story. Here we have the SA average. You can see how the algorithms work pretty much uh, well. You can see, for example, for the long period, uh, you have uh, the algorithm I've been able to, uh, has been able to classify all of the observations. As well, you can see the, um, Precision recall and values are pretty, pretty happy. In this slide, you can see a um, comparison between the uh, elastic uh, behavior we gave to the oscillator and the elastic plastic one. You can see as the lines are pretty much the same. So, for example, you can see how the, um, in terms of accuracy and fundamental period, how the lines work in terms of uh, the algorithm, algorithm we use. And you can see how for the short period and the long period, so 0 0.2 and 1 second, for the algorithm was uh, more easy to classify the correct output uh, to assign to each um, observation because of the nature of the data set. For the medium period, you can see we have um, a lot more cases uh, from the one class and the other class. So it was uh, more difficult for the algorithm to classify all of them. But at the same time, it's more realistic having a um, data set of this type. Here you can see another approach. We, this time we use another algorithm. This time we didn't use the app classification uh, uh, from MATLAB. We wrote uh, by hand the code. This time we use the random forest. Uh, as you can see, we were able to calculate the, to estimate the importance of the predictor. In this case, for example, you can see for the short period, we have the SOA average and the FIV3 that are pretty high. And then for the medium one as well, the SA average and the FIV3 are better than the others. And here, the confusion matrix, you can see the values are pretty high. So we can see that the, uh, this type of algorithm is uh, work better than the others. Here you have a schematic representation of how the algorithm uh, works. For example, for the short period, you can see that um, you, you can see a difference in terms of branches. It was easier for the algorithm to um, arrive to a conclusion, to a convergence in terms of classification for the short period. Uh, on the other end, you can see the medium period, you need a lot more branches, so a lot more uh, step driving a, a conclusion. Um, the algorithm which the highest accuracy is the random forest. As I said, the intensity measure which on the classification is more accurate are the SA average and FIV3. Conclusions. These are uh, just 
partial conclusions. As I said, this is just a forced approach to the problem. Uh, as I already said, it can be not see that substantial difference of accuracy for the classification between each label, which depends both on different periods and the chosen algorithms. This cause, the cause may be the unbalanced data set, since the majority of the oscillators are inclined to belong to just a single class, which can be a class of uh, collapse or non collapse. As a cause of this, the algorithm strains uh, on the prediction of just one class, not finding enough samples belonging to the less of the class. And uh, this is a, a problem of a balanced data set. There could be two possible solutions reducing the number of the most weighted class samples or increasing the number of the less weighted class samples. As I said, this is just a first step toward the development of a reliable structured damage classifier. And for sure, further, further research is needed to obtain a predictive tool for the seismic fragility assessment. Thanks.